It's still wet and soggy in Beulah this morning. We had almost an inch and a half of rain since I shot the video yesterday. So we're going to stay in the shop where it's dry, not very warm, but warm enough. And we're going to light a fire in the little wood stove today and try and drive off some of the, the humidity in the shop, make it a little bit more comfortable. So it's back to work. Well, we've got the uh, fire going in the wood stove, and I think that's going to make it a little bit more pleasant in here today. It's not really all that cold, it is just wet. And just one of those things that just bites right through you. So between the fire in the wood stove and the forge fire, it's probably going to be a pretty nice day here in the shop. Today we're going to finish working on our hinge project. And what we need to make today is a pintle. And this is not the pintle we're going to make. This is just an example of what a pintle does. I don't have a finished product handy. Um, although I do have some samples that I'll show you. And a pintle is just what the hinge hangs on. But you can make any number of pintles. You can make them like this that mounts to the, the door jam. You can make them a plate mount that mounts inside the door. Or the door, this mounts to the door frame. This would mount to the jam, I guess. You can make them that drive in, that screw in, that have a through bolt, lots of different styles. So let's take a quick look at a sample board that I have of some completed pintles to show you some, just some of the options. Here are just a few samples of pintle styles on a sample board that I keep for customers to look at. This is a rat tail pintle, a jam mount pintle. This is a traditional spiked end pintle and this is the style we're, we're probably going to be making today. And that pintle and this would both face mount, just different ideas of the same theme. That shows you just a few of the things that can be done as far as pintles. Use your imagination or look in some, uh, some of the books on blacksmithing, early American wrought iron, books like that will show you just huge varieties of pintles that you can make to hang your hinge straps. Let's get to the forge and let's start working. We have the forge fire lit, so it's time to get to work. The materials we're going to use for the body of the pintle the part that actually goes into the gate post is half inch square bar and this is going to be bent back around and welded back to itself and leave a little eye for the pin. The pin is 3 8 We made the eye 3 8 The pin has to be 3 8 We had inch and a half bar stock, half inch here, so at least two inches. I cut these about two and a half so that I'll have a little pin above the hinge and I'll have plenty to, to get the forge weld for the eye and, and if I need to do any upsetting there whatever I want to make sure I've got enough pin to do that I can always trim the end off later if it's a hair too long so we're going to start with the the half inch bar in the fire and this is just cut long so I've got a handle to hold on to you can certainly hold it in a pair of tongs if you'd rather and we will cut it off once we get the forge weld done Our pin is 3 8 so we're going to need about three times the diameter of the pin to wrap around the pin. So that would be about an inch and an eighth, a little bit more, inch and a quarter probably. So I'm going to actually step this off on the edge of the anvil. I want to leave enough to, to overlap and get my weld, but I want to just create a little hollow spot Remember, start short and draw it out because it's going to get longer. This is a place where an anvil block like this comes in handy. Although this block is a hair wide, I suspect. This one's, yeah, that's an inch and a half, and I don't want that much drawn out. So you kind of work with one shoulder up in the air. And this isn't something super critical at this point. It just needs to, to have a place you're going to be able to get the pin in when you're done. 
You also don't need a half inch shoulder for the, the hinge. The hinge is only quarter inch thick. So that gives me a little, little depression there when I wrap this around that will leave a, a hole or an eye for the pin to go through. Next thing we'll do is we'll scarf this in and prep for the weld. The simplest scarf is really just a bevel with a sharp edge that will blend into the other stock. and not leave a, a little cold shut. So that's really all you need for a scarf for this. Then we're going to bend that around. And this is going to be too small of an eye to start with, but it'll give me a place to get the, the drift into. I'm going to put the same drift in that we were using yesterday to form the hinge. And this just gives me something to, to establish my eye in the pintle. And bring that scarf together. And that's all I need right now. This is ready to weld. I'm going to get a little bit more heat and then flux it. This isn't going to take very much flux, just a little bit. I started kind of liking this stuff in the squeeze bottle. You've got to be careful not to melt the bottle though. Then I put it back in the fire with the scarf edge up. That's going to heat faster, so I want it further away from the hot part of the fire. A lot of people say you should watch for sparks coming out of the fire when you're forge welding. If you're getting 4th of July sparks, even a few, you've overheated something. And that doesn't mean your whole weld is, is hot enough, it just means at some point you got it too hot. So you're going to want to turn this in the fire a little bit, check it, try to leave a little window in the fire so you can actually see through the coal down there. And this is a place where coal, charcoal, or coke is way better than the gas forge because I don't need that big a heat that the gas forge would give me. That's just way too much. What we're looking for is for the surface of the metal, not just the, the flux, and it's easy to see the flux, but you want the surface of the metal to start to look kind of glossy and like it wants to melt. Your material will also start to disappear down into the, the fire. It will start to be the same color. Okay, quick light blows. Try not to collapse your eye. And that's cooling down enough that it's no longer welding heat. So I'm going to put it back in the fire. Back to the quick light blows for welding. As it starts to cool, I'm going to start creating a shoulder just off the edge of the anvil for the transition from the spike to the ring for the pintle or the pad. I guess I'm not sure what you would properly call that part of the pintle. In this case, I'm actually not going to go for a spiked pintle. The customer's request is for one that is threaded and will have a nut on the back side. The spike is quite simple. You just draw this end out to a spike after you've got the pin welded in. Okay, now we hope we left enough eye there to get the pin in without splitting the weld. I'm going to use my drift to enlarge this hole just a little bit. 
I don't want to drive the drift quite all the way through because I don't want the pin to fall out. I want it to be a drive-in fit at this point. And I've opened up that weld a little bit, but it's not the end of the world because we're going to take another weld of heat. So we're going to set the pin in there. Because I made this a little long, I'm actually going to drive that part way through. And that will allow me to upset the back of the pin just a little bit as part of the, the weld to help it be a little bit stronger. Some heat in the pin, and we're going to flux it. You can flux this in the fire, but that is one problem with the squeeze bottle. You can't get it in there. But I use a lot less flux with the little squeeze bottle. Now make sure you don't burn this pin off. It would be real easy to, to overheat the pin because it sticks out and it's smaller than the rest. I'm going to turn the draft on the fire down and come up to heat nice and slow. Okay, we're about up to welding heat. In real light, remember this is supposed to be a circle, don't squish it flat. Pretty comfortable with that, but I think I'm going to take another heat just to be sure. It's the pits when the pin falls out. I don't think I need any more flux for this. Like I say, I'm just refining the weld at this point. do with that little bit of pin sticking out. I'm going to use a, a heading tool, a bolster plate, however you want to look at it, and I'm going to upset that in, but I'm going to do that at pretty close to a welding heat. And I'm going to make a little head on the bottom of that. And we're going to drop that in the plate. And again, light blows. We're trying to upset this, not drive it through and shear your weld. But that really helps smooth up the top surface by having that in the plate. It makes a nice clean surface. Uh, I've got some misalignment there that I need to deal with. The pin's got to come out straight or your hinge won't hang straight. But try not to hammer that pin too much. The fact it cools off faster makes it a little bit safer to work with it there. So essentially that is your pintle. That will hold up a hinge. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more there. So that whole is all the, the hinge needs to sit on. These particular hinges are going to mount into a 4x4 four four post. 4 by 4 is typically three and a half, but maybe they're full thickness, so that's at least four inches and probably need another inch for a nut and a washer. So I'm going to cut this off at five inches from the shoulder, not from the, not from the outside. And that's up in here where it's still cold, so I'm just going to mark that, get it hot. 
Now certainly a spiked style pintle you would not cut off long enough to go all the way through the post. Try not to cut all the way through and hit the top of your hardy with your your hammer. Break that off. And we're going to put the, the pintel back in the fire. Remember, we're going to thread this so it needs to be round and half inch round. We're already half inch square, so it's pretty simple. We take the half inch square, forge it to an octagon, then we forge it to a round. You're better off leaving this a hair oversized than getting it undersized. You can always file it down and make your make your threads fit. But you're, if you have wimpy threads, you're not going to be happy. So that's just about a sixteenth over right now. still kind of square up here by the the pin and that's okay too that can all be put into the post just fine okay I'm pretty happy with that the next thing we'll do is clean up the round with a file or a grinder and make sure it's half inch at least far enough for the threads to, to be all the way into the post and then we'll thread it with a, a tap or a, a threading die and that's a very basic pintle for a spike pintle you just draw that out to a spike and don't make it so long it looks like I forgot to turn the microphone back on after this pintle cooled off so here I'm filing a shoulder just want to give it a place where it'll come to bear on the edge of the post instead of being a taper that might draw in and split the post this will give it a little bit of a shoulder to just come up to the 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 hole in the post the shank still needs to be cleaned up just a little bit it's just just a hair over a half inch it needs to be pretty exact for a threading die a simple drill bit gauge is a good way to measure for the, the hole size since it's done in 60 fourths of an inch. And it's getting pretty close. Even if it's just a little bit snug, you can probably cut that with most dies, but it is a lot more work to cut a slightly oversized thread down than it is one that's just exact. Not having the audio on does save you from listening to the screeching of a file, which is certainly a, uh, a bonus. So we're going to put a little bit of oil on it to prepare for threading. You should always oil your taps and your dies. One disadvantage to, to doing the threaded dot version of the pentel is if you don't have the tap and die set you have to go buy one and this is a rather large die and can be somewhat expensive to buy the die stock and the die. If that's all you, if you don't have this already and you don't need an excuse to go buy one, a spike pencil might be a better option. But these are a very secure way to mount a gate. This is never going to pull out unless somebody steals the nut off the back end.
a little more oil back the the die stock up every now and then to break the chips free and just keep going I don't think we need to watch the whole process of cutting these threads it looks all the same for the entire two or three inches that I'm going to cut rounding the shank of the pintle up on the anvil with a hammer is a great skill builder however if you're making a lot of these and you don't want to spend a lot of time cleaning that round up with a grinder or files top and bottom swedges like this are an outstanding way to to work you'll need a striker or you'll need to make sure that this fits in your treadle hammer if you have a treadle hammer if you have a power hammer you can use a spring die like this and this is what I generally use you can also get dies or make dies for fly press, hydraulic press, whatever you're using. But a, a set of swedges will really, really help this go along. And using a striker is a, is a lot of fun. So if you can get a friend to come over and swing a sledgehammer, this is a pretty good option. So here's our completed pencil. It's threaded half inch by 13. And I'll provide a washer and a square nut because I think the square nuts look better that have been blackened in the forge and waxed to match the the pentel. I think that looks a lot better than providing some sort of a galvanized nut or even a hex nut. Much better appearance. That fits our hinge. Pivots nicely. Yeah, out of the picture. The pin ends up just barely flush. I don't mind them if they stick up just a little bit, but this is just fine the way it is. And that is all ready to go out. Well, it's a very basic strap hinge and pintle combination. Highly functional. You'll find these on barns that are hundreds of years old and the hinges still work. You'll find antique hinges sold online and in stores that the hinges are 100% useful. Usually the pintles have been lost and sometimes people will need to make you new pentels. But this system has worked for centuries and it still works today and is an excellent way to hang a door or a gate, barn doors, house doors. It all works. So give it a try and look at some of my other videos on making hinges. I have several that show some parts in that one professional series of videos that Pumpkin Musher Productions did for me a few years ago that shows a small forge welded hinge. Well worth watching. I think you might enjoy those. In the meantime, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get out to the shop, stay safe,